Dr. Monty, let's get into some of the details of evidence-based ways that we can de-stress because this has been a really important part of your career. So what's the first technique or, or strategy that you wanna share with us? Yeah, I, I wanna jump right into that. And, but before I do, I would just like to underscore something that Dr. Bazan was saying and that I alluded to in the opening which is this mechanism of inflammation. And so the reason that we, we, we talk about it is because of how destructive high levels of inflammation is and how it fuels virtually every disease we know of and makes um, every illness process worse. And so uh, we're starting with the, with the notion of chronic stress increasing inflammation, which it does, it increases those inflammatory chemicals. And just to sort of, again, weave it all together, since weave is one of our verbs with a tapestry of health, um, you know, Dr. Bazan is talking about these other things that increase inflammation, um, such as gut permeability, um, and all the, th the things that affect uh, the gut and permeability and the health of the gut, such as food, and also stress itself affecting the gut directly. And what, when inflammation is high and those inflammatory chemicals are high, that also affects resilience to cope with the next round of stress that happens in one's life. And so it really becomes this negative vicious cycle. And um, the one sort of one of the unifying principles of understanding the mechanism of how deleterious it all is inflammation. And so when we think about, okay, what are the things that are in our control um, for dampening inflammation and inflammatory processes? Dr. Bazan alluded to some with um, diet, vitamin D, getting enough uh, vitamin D and um, uh, two is high for the, that, that's great, the two of you. I'm not sure that if I, if I had two in the last year um, of people who weren't supplementing it, um, we, uh, we don't get a tremendous amount of sunshine, but also um, the reality is people protect themselves against the sun, which is the primary source of vitamin D. Uh, we've, you know, destroyed the ozone. So there's an increased risk of, uh, of skin cancer. And so people are very cautious and thoughtful about that. But then how do we get enough vitamin D? And it's very difficult in the diet. There aren't a lot of foods that are rich in vitamin D unless, you know, you're going to eat polar bear liver. Um, that's one of the sources of high vitamin D. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we, as we, as I think uh, mentioned in the, in the first webinar, but it, it, it really creates a challenge for people to make sure that they have a sufficient uh, level of vitamin D. And so to things that we can do in the kind of uh, psychological realm for stress, one of the things that um, you started with is my go-to, and that's to breathe. And it sounds so simple, right? We are, I'm breathing, you're breathing. But for everyone who's tuned in right now, if for just a moment you pay attention to how you're breathing right this moment, and if you've had a stressful day, there's a good chance that the way you're breathing right now is sort of, sort of short and halting breaths. And you might even notice that you're holding your breath a lot. This is what happens when we're in that stressful fight or flight mode where we're not taking those breaths that Dr. Gottfried encouraged you to take, those full belly breaths. Or when you think about it, the kind of breathing when you're sleeping. I often you know, re refer to that, you know, think about breathing the way that one does when, the way you do when you're asleep. You know, that nice full breaths. Because when we're in a restful sleep, that's when the nervous system is in that restoration and recuperation mode, as opposed to the fight or flight mode. And we, we, we sort of trick the nervous system to go back into that restoration recuperation mode when we simply intervene with breathing. So what I tell people to do every day is to take some time throughout the day and just focus 
for a couple of moments on your breathing. Just thinking about your breathing will actually take it to a deeper, more rhythmic state. And then if you just focus a little more on enhancing that, you do a big thing for your nervous system. And this little intervention throughout the day has really big responses. And then, and there's great data on this. There's great data how uh, breathing resets the nervous system. Breathing affects heart rate variability, which is an indirect measure of the parasympathetic nervous system, the restoration recuperation branch of the nervous system as opposed to the fight or flight survival part of the nervous system. And so we can then take it to the next level beyond that with things like mindfulness and other techniques we can talk about. But my go-to thing is breathing and just teaching people to breathe.